Hi everyone, Monique Ruffin here again. It's good to be here continuing the conversation about female sexuality and politics. Um, it's Saturday morning in Los Angeles. It's a beautiful morning. It's a little cloudy rain last night, so it's water on the ground. And I wanted to say thank you to all of you who've been sending emails, asking questions. I'm doing my research as fast as I can. I told you I'm not an expert, but I'm working on it. And I want to say thank you to everyone who sent a nice note saying that they liked my gray hair. But it's gone for now. Um, it'll be gone for about <laughs> three days before it'll be back. So I wanted to continue having this conversation after the Republican debate. And um, what struck me about the debate is that I feel like we're framing the dialogue absolutely wrong here in this nation. And we need to really get clear about what we're talking about and, and the perspective that we're taking. And for instance, Ron King or John King from CNN asked Rick Santorum about um, his statement that contraceptives are dangerous. And like just that question in that way is ridiculous. The, you're framing it wrong <laughs> because the conversation is not about contraceptives. The conversation is about our biology, why we need contraceptives and, and what do women need in order to make choices for their lives. But nonetheless, it was framed in that way. And Rick Santorum went on to say that, um, went on to talk about the immor immorality of this nation and children that are being born out of wedlock and didn't actually even mention contraceptives at all. He just talked about children being born out of wedlock, 40% quoted, um, you know, the New York Times, a, a book saying that children who are raised in two, two parent homes have a better chance of being successful. And, and, um, and it just all feels very contrived for me. And, but the thing is we listen to it and we take it in as if it's true in some way, because you know, we aspire to these ideas. So this conversation about immorality, these are the things that I would say are immoral. I think it's immoral to raise children in environments where they are not loved, where they do not have resources, where they don't have schools to go to, to be prepared, um, to assist, to be assisted in fulfilling their potential, where they're not in schools that where teachers understand the value within them, love them, love their jobs, and give these kids the love and the nurturing that they need in order to fulfill on their potential. Where children are not being raised in homes that they're being given information, information about their bodies, information about who they are divinely, spiritually, you know, just where parents don't have resources. Um, you know, there's something really interesting about this conversation about two parent homes. Well, when, when two parents are in the home and everyone's working and you know, the family structure is not truly intact, honestly, because we don't have, um, what we don't have in this culture like we once did is we had grandparents who were home and we had just neighbors that we trusted and loved and understood. And so what really has become immoral in this nation is that we are not connected one to another. We don't know our neighbors. We don't know our teacher, our children's teachers. We don't know ourselves. We are at work for hours in the day, long hours, and then we don't know our children. Those are the kinds of things that break down family structure and that create, um, for me, immorality. One of the other things that they talked about in the debate was, you know, just the access to contraceptives. And at the core of that is insurance companies. And President Barack Obama's new health plan makes it manda mandatory for every woman to have access to not only, you know, health exams, breast exams, pelvic exams, free, to also have access to contraceptives. And historically, insurance companies were able to deny women the care that they needed. I would say that that's immoral, <laughs> absolutely immoral. So we need to start framing this conversation in a way that really um, supports women being 
empowered and that's really up to us ladies we cannot assume that those in power you know one of the reasons I love politics so much is because it is about creating policies and the people who create the policies are the ones that we elect to Washington DC and then those policies trickle down and impact my life and your life so we cannot give the people that we elect in Washington the sort of mandate to have control over our lives we have to understand that the things that they say at some point might become policies that impact us in our doctor's offices and at the gas pump and in our grocery stores and women because we are oftentimes you know very active in our households we're doing the shopping we're taking care of the children we're at the schools we're doing these policies impact us directly in a way um, that we need to be aware of and so when they start to talk about things like immorality that's not what this is about at all this is about how do we create policies that serve the well-being of the people in this nation we the people and up till now men have been creating these policies for us we are not children we are not ignorant we need to understand what these policies do in our lives we need to understand our bodies and we need to participate that is the only way we're going to change this current dialogue which i'm actually very grateful for because it allows us to see the undercurrent that is running this nation and why we are in 2012 having conversations about women's rights women's bodies women's reproductive rights without women being in the room so kudos to the new dialogue we get to see where we need to participate where there's still growth where we still need to evolve how we need to show up for ourselves the last thing that I want to say a little bit about is that um, this idea that sex is immoral is ridiculous sex is natural as natural as eating drinking sleeping and it has nothing to do with our religious affiliation if people choose to have sex in the structure of their religious beliefs that is their choice and that is fine and for those who choose not to that's completely fine too sex is a biological function like breathing eating sleeping we need it in order to survive we need it in order to survive as a species to procreate and we need it for all sorts of it's good for us sex is medicine <laughs> just so you know so there is a value in teaching your children your teens the biology of their bodies teaching like I was telling you I'm reading this book by Luann Brizendine the female brain to teach a young girl that it is natural and normal for her to have desires sexual desires to um, really want to be attractive to boys to teach her to appreciate and celebrate her body and as women we can begin to do that ourselves we you know we've grown up so repressed in this culture trying to survive and I get it but we've been so repressed and we push away our sexuality because we've been told that it's immoral and that we don't want to be considered a slut or a whore or a tramp and I'm here to say that those are lies they are not the truth and I got an email from a friend of mine the other day saying that he's met so many women who just are afraid to be inside of their sensuality and sexuality and how um, you know how it's difficult to be in relationships with these women and so we get to really enjoy sex we get to celebrate our sensuality and sexuality um, we get to determine for ourselves what feels right for us we get to understand ourselves outside of the structure of religious organizations and you know whether that be Muslim or Christian we really need to understand our biology accept it embrace it and then live from that place we are sexual sensual creatures that is who we are and until we own that and celebrate that and live that way we will continue to see 
men making decisions for us. We will continue to see um, in the media women not being appreciated for the, the whole being that we are. Um, we are we are sexual sensual beings but we are also much more than that we are also intelligent we are also creative we are also nurturing and until we embrace all of that for ourselves we cannot expect for our society to do so so I just want to thank you for being here today I want to encourage you to go read my blog um, at Huffington Post Rick Santorum's got his hands up my dress and I don't like it, um, visit my website, moniquegruffin.com. Send me questions, comments, um, leave messages here, whatever you can do. I would love your participation, and I'm very grateful. See, my t-shirt says it. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, and I hope you're grateful too, and we are pressing forward. It's really good. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.